Okay, we have a GM five wire mass airflow sensor. Two of these wires are for the intake air temp, no different than any NTC type thermistor. And then three wires have to do with the mass airflow sensor themselves. You're going to have a fused power, this is a 12 volt power, a ground, and then a signal wire. So it's going to be the mass airflow's job to pull a 5 volt signal to ground. So it is a digital sensor, and the way that the ECM is able to interpret airflow is by the frequency of the sensor. Uh, if you run into a newer, I believe it's 2012 and up, a lot of GMs went to a 8-wire mass airflow sensor. It's like a multi-air uh, sensor. It's going to look at uh, barrow, humidity, intake air temp, and then mass airflow. The same principles will apply. It's still a digital mass airflow sensor so all you have to do is figure out which one of those eight wires is the signal wire for the mass airflow and uh, a lot of times the diagram doesn't really help you out too much but the um, the pinout chart will say mass airflow sensor signal it's going to depend on what kind of sensors installed on the vehicle there's Hitachi and Bosch sensors but for this, it's really clear. This is a redrawn diagram, but this is everything that GM gives us. It's really clear which one is the airflow signal. So we're going to place our uh, positive test there. You know, in this case, channel A on the picoscope, the blue test lead is going to go at the mass airflow sensor, and then our ground lead is just going to go. In this case, I think I went to the battery ground. We are, however, going to stack another channel on so channel A and B we're going to stack them together and back probe the sensor I will discuss why I stacked the second lead on in a minute here um, when you start stacking these leads you can start to uh, put a lot of tension on the pins and I don't like to break them so I use these flexible back probe pins when I do this and then we're going to go ahead and take our ground lead we're going to stack both of them because I'm using a the newest picoscope so I need to make sure every channel has a ground we're gonna stack them and go ahead and go to battery ground once you do that and you turn on your scope you're gonna get a frequency type signal I have a lot of time on the screen here so we're gonna zoom in on this and I'd like to show you what really the signal looks like up close so as you can see this is just a frequency signal it's a pretty fast signal and I'm going to kind of go over to where I did a snap throttle judging by the noise I think it was over here yep and you can see where the frequency of the signal does begin to change so as the airflow changes so does the frequency of this and that doesn't really give me much information so there is a better way to to look at these sensors and so if you've ever scoped an analog mass airflow this will kind of feel more familiar to you. So I had channel A and I had it just set to voltage to look at the frequency. The great thing about the Pico is it they actually have, so like you see this menu where you can pick DC or AC, they also have a frequency choice on the menu now too. And what it'll do is it'll take the frequency and graph it out. So that's why we put two channels on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on what I recorded on channel B and you get something that looks like this and so you can see as we snap the throttle the sensor itself gets graphed out and our scale on the right hand side is in Hertz and so we can kind of look at the frequency of the pattern so it's a really nice easy way to take a look at a mass airflow sensor signal and kind of get an idea. Some guys can tell um, if they've done this enough they can tell when a sensor is dirty and or, you know or underestimating airflow. So it's kind of a cool trick. Now there's one other way to do this without the uh, use of a second channel. So if you don't want to burn up another channel maybe you're scoping a lot of stuff. I'm going to turn off channel B. Um, oh, before I turn off channel B, I did want to show you, just so you know, I actually did use the 20 kilohertz filter, the actual hardware filter. Um, you may need to 
filter the pattern to kind of get what I see here. Otherwise, you might get some spikes. And if you're okay with the spikes, that's fine too. Just understand that that's what they are. So if you don't want to burn up another channel, there's another way to do this. And that is with math channels. So we're going to go to tools. And then we're going to go to math channels. And so what this does is it allows us to use, you know, we could take two channels. And I'll show you in another video. We could take two channels and... Uh, like subtract them or add them to each other so that's good for um, like throttle motors and stuff um, but you can also use this to filter the signal and then you can also use this to basically do the same thing with the channel B so I'm gonna go ahead and create and we're gonna go next and so I want it for channel A I gotta click advanced oh, I'm sorry I gotta get rid of A now I hit advanced we're gonna go to click frequency and then channel A and it won't let us go forward unless the formula we put in there is good, but this one is. So frequency for channel A, and then we can pick what color we want it to show up as. I typically, when I run these math channels, I actually use like an odd color. Just so like when I look at a waveform, I know that that was a math channel and not something that I scoped. So I typically shy away from the blue, red, green, or, or yellow. So I'm going to just go with the magenta here. And we're going to click Hertz and Finish and now we can select it and by the way you can name these I've done this before you see I have this GM mass airflow sensor so I have it already saved in here but we're gonna go ahead and click this one here and then we will click OK and you will see we're going to scale it a little bit we're gonna get something that looks very similar to what we had on channel B and again so what you can do is you can measure the frequency of the pattern and it graphs it out and we got the same results as when we actually measured it so just to show you the similarities here you can see these are very similar says uh, similar patterns so it's a great easy way for you to you know really visualize the sensor itself and so this one you're going to kind of ignore this and kind of use this to, to um, diagnose these sensors on a snap throttle. Good luck. Enjoy.